Hello everyone and thanks for watching. Over the next several minutes, I'll show you how to build this fun, interactive loan payment calculator and amortization table. Are you ready? Let's get started. We'll start with this blank template that I just created the formatting for. I've already got some mortgage numbers in there that we can practice with. We'll just need to fill out the output section. And the most important one is, of course, what's the payment amount in Excel that is a payment function, PMT. So we'll go uh, equals PMT, open print. And then once you start the formula, you can get some help by clicking the little function button here, kind of a little cheat sheet that explains what's going on. For our rate, it's the 7% here, but because that's an annual rate and we'll be making monthly payments or monthly interest accruals, if you will, I'm going to divide that by 12. The number of periods for the loan is right here, 360. Present value is 300,000 right here. We don't have to worry about a future value or a type. Uh, we're going to be doing a standard loan here that's going to pay off completely. So future value will be zero. Click OK. And then you're like, well, wait a second. How come that's a negative number? Well, it's negative because finance professionals usually consider out, out payments or outflows of cash to be a negative number and inflows a positive number. But because we want this to look nice, we're just going to put a negative there. Now for our first payment date, I'm going to use the e-date function, which really just counts months. And if our loan date is this, I'm just going to assume that our first payment date is one month from the date of the loan. So that second argument's a one. For our last payment date, I'm going to use the same function. Again, open print, go to the loan date except the second one in this is the number of payments and there's a pretty scary last payment date. Uh, the next two, the total interest paid and the total payments are going to be coming once we build the amortization schedule. They're going to refer to that schedule and so that is up next. To begin for the payment number, create the ability to go up to 360 payments since as a practical matter, at least right now, that's the longest loan you'll encounter. You can just do a one plus one and copy down or just drag down and fill down. But at any rate, I would go down to 360 to create the most flexible schedule that you can. Our payment date is going to be another um, e-date function for this first row. And again, we're assuming that the first payment is one month from the date of the loan. Our payment amount, we know that. I'm going to go ahead and press F4 here and um, freeze that. Our beginning balance is the 300000 Pretty easy. The amount to interest is actually the loan amount times the annual interest rate divided by 12 because we're accruing interest monthly in this case, not annually. The amount to principal is our payment amount minus the amount to interest. So that makes our ending balance, our beginning balance, minus the amount to went to, that went to uh, principal. So there's our ending balance after the first payment. Now, Rows two through the end of the amortization table have to be a different formula than row one because your ending balance is it can no longer flow from the top. Yeah, you're, it's no longer three hundred thousand, so it's going to be a little bit different, and we'll go through that next. Now, rather than watching me type the second row, I've taken the liberty of entering it, but let's go through each of the formulas. Here in the payment date, I'm basically saying that if the ending balance is greater than zero, go ahead and add another month. Otherwise, make that null. For the payment amount, I'm really doing the same thing. If the ending balance is, is um, greater than zero, create, pull down another payment. Otherwise, make that zero. The beginning balance is uh, coming off the ending balance. Again, if it's greater than zero, the amount to interest is 
an accrual off of the ending balance now. It's no longer the 300000 And again, I'm saying, actually this time, if the payment amount is calculated at zero, then you go ahead and make that interest zero. Otherwise, do the accrual. This is simply subtraction, just like before. Same thing here. So now, what I get to do is copy each one of these down. The reason I'm doing this is because if you just create the regular formulas, once you copy it down, it'll still work for 360, but if you make it a shorter loan, you'll wind up getting a bunch of negative numbers. And I'll demonstrate that in a bit later in the video, but right now it looks like we actually have an ending balance of zero here at the end. So everything's looking good so far. Last payment date corresponds here. For total interest paid, it's going to be a simple sum. Again, I can go up here and pick this up. Shift down. Picks up the entire column. H11 through H370. Total of payments. I could do the multiplication, but I could also pick it up here. Whoops. There we go. That concludes our creation of the amortization table. Now, the reason I like doing it this way is because if you have shorter payment periods, say it's just, I don't know, $100 for five payments, you wind up, the schedule winds up being very clean. If you don't do that, you wind up with negative numbers down here. So uh, that's the amortization schedule. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks a lot for watching. Yeah.